that's what I did when I really wanted to grow my hair out and it grew like this. My hairline did get fuller and thicker. Don't do layers, just don't do it. I used to push through an irritated, flaky scalp. Protect your hair over trying to repair your hair. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I hope everyone's having a happy new year. And if one of your new year's resolutions this year is to have healthy, longer, fuller hair, this video is for you. My new year's resolution is to start making more YouTube videos, so subscribe subscribe. I'll help you out with the hair stuff. You help me out with YouTube. So these are going to be things that I wish I knew when I was entering my hair journey. I used to have like really broken, damaged hair. I always had a lot of hair, but it was broken and damaged and just not where I wanted it to be. We're going to be talking about hair breakage, but we're going to be talking about the wash cycles that I would do and that I wish I knew when I was starting off, I'm going to share with you guys what style of wash routine I had depending on the situation. We're also going to be talking about growing more hair and growing long hair. And we're also going to be going over what can you still do? Should you avoid heat? Should you avoid bleaching? Should you just like not have fun anymore? We're going to go over that all in this video. Starting off with preventing hair breakage. I always say prevent breakage over repair breakage. All of the reparative hair treatments can be really pricey and really expensive. Some people will argue and say that they don't work. I do believe that they work, but it's better to not even have to go there. We do go there because I will share with, with you guys some of the reparative treatments that I do like to use, but you, you want to be at a place where you don't have to use them all the time. When it comes to preventing hair breakage, you don't have to keep buying stuff. The few items that I do suggest for you guys to buy, it's a one-time purchase, meaning you get it and then you literally don't have to buy it again. So after you get it, it's like free to have breakage-free hair. So yeah, <laughs> chroma. So from my experience, by the way, all of this, this entire video is going to be based off of my personal experience. My number one reason for breakage was mechanical damage. Mechanical damage is basically the breakage that you get from being rough with your hair. So say you let a lot of tangles build up and then you're just like brushing your hair as hard as you can and then you're, you know, your ends are splitting or like say you're wearing really harsh fabrics and your hair is always rough rubbing up against it, stuff like that. And if you don't believe that mechanical damage is real, look at the hairs that are right be below here and then compare it to hair that's literally like in the middle of it all. This hair here is protected from the top hairs and the bottom hairs and you'll notice there's like no breakage. This hair is almost always perfect. And then the hair that's down here has got like split ends throughout. It's always breaking off. It will somehow be like shorter than the rest of the hair sometimes. And that is because it's always rubbing up against like your clothes and what you're wearing. And you know, that's very like unavoidable and it's fine, but that's kind of just to prove to you guys that mechanical breakage is real. And here are some things that you could do to prevent it. Starting off with your pillowcase. You are sleeping eight hours a day, or at least you should be. And if you are using a harsh fabric, you're going to get more breakage. During the night, you are tossing and turning, and that causes breakage. So I love to use a silk pillowcase while I sleep. Shameless plug, I do own a silk pillowcase company. I'm gonna link it down below so you guys can shop. Sephora sells their silk pillowcases for like, $35 more. So save yourself $35 and shop at mymainthing.com. <laughs> and then I understand that even that might not be in everyone's budget. You can use satin. Now here's my, I have a little bit of beef with satin. Does it have the same exact benefits to your hair and skin like silk does? Some people might say no. I'm actually going to say yes. I think it's it has the same effects. I started off with that before I moved over to silk and the results were there. And that's when I realized that your pillowcase matters. But here's my beef with satin. It is more slippery and I get uncomfortable really easily when I'm sleeping. Like the, the smallest things will like make me so irritated and satin just wants to like slip off my head. So for some reason, like I'll end up with like neck pain pain. Uh, comment down if this, if this has happened to you before because I feel like I might be the only one and it might sound like a crazy person right now, but satin is just not comfortable for me. It's also like cheaper 
quality so i had like the threads popping out like a lot sooner than it should i don't know when it should pop out i've been using my silk pillowcases the ones for my main thing for over yeah it actually just hit the one year mark for over a year now and they are in perfect condition so yeah that's gonna be a really easy step is to switch over to silk. Again, one-time purchase and you're done with it. You're literally saving your hair eight hours a day just by doing that one purchase. Another option that you could do is get yourself a bonnet. I personally don't like sleeping with stuff on my hair, so I don't like bonnets. And then another thing is you don't really get like the skin benefits when you're using a bonnet because the bonnet's obviously not on your face, it's on your hair, whatever. You guys get it. Enough with the silk pillowcases. <laughs> Another similar switch that you could do is use silk scrunchies or cotton elastics. Hair ties? I don't know. Versus your regular hair ties. These are going to be like pulling off your hair, irritating, adds a lot of stress to your hair. I don't know. I hate these and I didn't know how much I hated until I started using these. These are so, so, so amazing. Saves your hair from breaking. So much more comfortable. I could wear it for a lot longer. They last a lot longer. They don't break on you. Another great little tip is when you are doing ponytails or buns, try to switch up the location of it. Like putting it in the same spot every single day can add stress. So if you are a high ponytail girl, maybe do like a medium the next day and then like a lower the next. Like just try to switch it up. And then this part is totally free and it's just to be cautious of your activities. For example, when you are driving and your hair is all the way in the back and you're constantly like leaning forward and backwards and like doing too much like mechanical damage <laughs> and it sounds so silly but like over time these things do have like an effect so what i like to do when i'm driving is i like to pull all my hair forward to just like one side and drive that's it so that's one thing that you can do um, and just be gentle with it when you're doing sit-ups have your hair up in a bun don't like a high bun don't be like squashing your hair every every time you're like sitting back on the floor and then getting up and back and like just just be cautious just be cautious of your hair be gentle with it wake up detangle your hair go to sleep detangle your hair throughout the day have a comb on you have a little detangle session during your lunch break or just whatever just keep your hair detangled at all times if you're taking really bad care of your hair to the point where you are just getting a bunch of split ends two things can happen if you are a thick haired girl like me you can still grow your hair out long but it is just not gonna look good your ends are going to look dry brittle and just like a piece of hay honestly and then for girls who have really thin hair because your hair isn't thick enough to just like split into like a million pieces your hair is just gonna snap off and that's the biggest thing with like these fine hair bleach blonde girls that i'm seeing they're saying that their hair doesn't grow doesn't grow doesn't grow but the truth is by the time it gets down to a certain length your hair is just so fragile that it just ends up snapping off so yeah protect your hair over trying to repair your hair. Okay, next let's move on to the wash cycles that I do. So I have a few and I don't necessarily stick to these like all the time. I kind of just like do what I want, but typically this is what my wash cycle looks like. I have a deep clean wash cycle, which basically that means that I go in and exfoliate my entire scalp I shampoo my hair with a clarifying shampoo, typically has sulfates in there, just because I really want to lather it up and clean. I clean my hair until it is squeaky clean, and then I'll just add whatever mask that I feel like adding to my whole hair. And that's my deep clean wash cycle. I'll do that like, like once a month. And by the way, I do only wash my hair like once a week maybe twice a week depending on what's going on depending on the weather so if i'm washing my hair just once a week that would mean that i'm typically only washing my hair four times a month another wash combo that i like to do is a reparative system wash i'll either use olaplex or redken i'm actually really new to the olaplex but i've been really 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 loving it and typically this will include a pre-shampoo treatment and that's going to be like the one that like gets the magic done. And then the shampoo and conditioner that it comes with. If your hair is extremely, extremely damaged, I highly suggest both of these. Honestly, just like pick one 
and stick to it until your hair is in a better condition. My third wash cycle is going to be a very lightweight wash. I like to do this one a lot during the summertime when I'm in the pool a lot. And this wash duo is going to be perfect for people who are washing their hair every single day or every other day. And it's basically going to be like your lightweight shampoo and conditioner. The one that I really, really enjoyed this year was the Ceremonia line. I also love Monday Hair Care, their moisture line. What else? I don't know why I can't think of any. But basically, it's going to be just like your gentle, gentle wash. I love doing that, especially during the summertime when I'm wearing my hair natural a lot more. Um, and then another one that I've kind of let go of, but I think it's still a really good one, is using a glossing system. I really love the one by Kerastase and I love the one by L'Oreal. Both are so, so, so amazing and it just makes your hair super shiny and soft. I love it. Um, so those are the, the wash cycles that I'm really into. What you need to do is really prioritize what your hair needs. For example, say I wanna do like the reparative system wash, but my scalp is a little extra itchy. I am going to go in with my scalp scrub too, even though it's not time for the deep clean you kind of just have to pick and choose to whatever your needs are and back when i used to have dandruff and a very unhealthy scalp i used to use my scalp scrub and serums and treatments every single wash day until i was cured okay now let's talk about growing more hair and growing long hair now Here's the thing with me, I'm, I'm speaking on my experience and I've always had a lot of hair and growing more hair has never been my concern until last year. I noticed my hairline was like going too far far back and I think that that was due to like the dandruff I had here I was always itching it I was also always getting like little pimples and acne here so throughout all of like high school and college I was like popping that and I feel like my hair like receded um because of that so that was the only time I was really concerned about like growing more hair and I started using Vegamore Grow Drops and then I also used this one by the way and I have to say my my hairline did get fuller and and thicker so i am here to say that i really do believe that these drops work however i will say these are pricey it's not like the silk pillowcases where it's just a one-time buy and a one-time fix like vegamore it claims that you will not even see results until after 60 days and one bottle will last you like a month so it's like you don't have to have the budget for just one bottle you have to have it for 12 bottles if you plan on doing this treatment for an entire year you know what i mean and i know that like rosemary oil and all these other things have gotten really popular throughout these past years and i have to be honest with you guys i have never tried it so i cannot speak on it but i don't know should i try it this year let me know leave your comments down below i think i am willing to experiment back in the day when i was desperate to get my hair healthy i would make like my own hair masks with like avocados and mayonnaise and like a bunch of like random food because that's what the internet was telling me and it honestly just it, it, it didn't work it was disgusting and if anything i think it made my hair worse so ever since then i've been like kind of staying away from diy home projects for the hair but it looks like this rosemary thing is actually legit so i'm thinking of actually giving it a try let me know if you think I should do that. Let's talk about haircuts. How did I forget about haircuts? If your goal is to have longer hair, fuller hair, don't do layers. Just don't do it. We talked about before how, how mechanical damage is such a big thing. If your hair is all together, it's got so much protecting it and it is just going to grow stronger and together and you will need less hair haircuts which brings me to my next point how often should you get a haircut literally only when you need it if your goal is to have long hair and you are taking care of it, you are preventing breakage three months from now you may not need a haircut okay a good measuring scale for when you need a haircut is basically how how much different does your hair look the ends from when you got the haircut so say you got a haircut and your hair looks like this three months later it still looks like this but it's longer you don't need a haircut if you get your haircut looks like this and then three months later it's looking like it's splitting it's dry get a trim that's fine but if your goal is to grow your hair longer fuller you don't need all the little haircuts don't worry about it but yeah avoid layers if you have 
thick hair and you have a lot of it, you can get away with a little bit of layer. And if you really want to, do some like face framing pieces, but like the back, keep it full. That's what I did when I really wanted to grow my hair out and it grew like this. Okay, now let's talk about what can you do. Can I still use my straightener? Can I still like look cute? Do I have to stay away from heat for forever and ever and ever? And this is what I have to say. As long as you have a heat protectant, you are good. Hold on. A heat protectant and a high quality heat tool. Okay. My hair used to be so fried, so damaged, and I definitely used to think that it was because of the heat, and it kind of was because I would straighten my hair, curl my hair with no heat protectant and with old used like thrift store bought hair straighteners. And like, I get it, like the struggle is real, the struggle was real, and it damaged my hair. It damaged my hair pretty badly, but I really do think that a high quality heat tool is a worth the investment. And use heat protectant. I don't think your heat protectant has to be expensive, just use heat protectant. I don't know how many of you guys have seen like the toast reference where it's like you can put your toast literally at a certain heat and time for it to burn but the ones that have like butter or like moistness on it doesn't burn but then the super dry toast does burn that is so real that is so real and then i actually have a new analogy for using a high quality hot tool think about a high quality pan if you have one of those high quality non-stick pans you can use the smallest amount of oil and put all your vegetables and stuff in there and it's not gonna get stuck and it's all going to be just like perfect and delicious versus a super old rusty pan if you want things to not stick on there you're gonna have to add a lot of oil and and it's just not high quality and it's the same thing for your hair a high quality tool that you take care of is going to last you a long time and it's going to just be super healthy for your hair i personally have been using ghd for way over a year now and i absolutely love it and if you guys follow me like on tiktok or instagram you'll see that i'm heat styling my hair almost every single week i think the only time i really take a break is like summer and late into the summer just because i love rock just like my natural waves but even with my natural waves i'll go in there with my straightener and just like add more waves to make it look even like more polished so get yourself a high quality hot tool um, and then i can make a whole separate video on this but blow drying your hair is not the enemy he is not your enemy if you are going to bed if you just washed your hair and you need to go to bed and you're in between going to sleep with wet hair or having to blow dry it blow dry it literally going to sleep with wet hair causes like a bunch of scalp issues i had them i had an itchy scalp i used to have such an itchy scalp that i would scratch it until it bled that sounds so disgusting but like that used to be my life and i used to think that it was normal and i'm here to tell you that it's not and you can blow dry your hair and be fine Again, a high quality one will really help. I use the Helios by GHD. Now let's talk about hair bleaching and hair dyeing. Am I totally against it? No, not totally, but I don't think that you should do any dramatic changes while your goal is to have healthier, longer hair. These things are damaging. I think if you do want to do anything, I would limit myself to bleaching to only one shade lighter. And if you're going to go darker, don't go any darker than your root. I think these things are going to help you, first of all, just look like your best self. When God created you, he did such a good job. You don't need to do any dramatic changes. I know that you're bored. I know that you just want something different sometimes, but I don't know. Look at me. I'm literally always going back to dark hair no matter how many times I bleach it. I'm always going back to dark hair, so just, yeah, just embrace who you are. Unless you really don't want to, then do whatever you want, but that's just my advice and my opinion. It's just my advice, do whatever you want. And then last but not least, how often should you wash your hair? Lately, I've been washing my hair every seven days and I didn't even realize that I was doing that until I started making my days after hair wash series. I was making them back to back to back and I was like, wow, I'm really going some days without washing my hair. I literally go around telling people that I wash my hair every four to five days. Uh, turns out that's a lie. 
That's a lie. I've just been delusional. I wash my hair every seven days. Should you be doing that? Um, literally only only if you can. If you can. If you are having an itch itch attack on your scalp day three, please. You should have washed it day two. You know what I mean? I used to push through an irritated, flaky scalp because I thought all of the, the cool YouTube hair girls wash their hair every seven days. So I forced myself to do that and that's just not the way to do that eventually like now i'm at a place where i can do that comfortably but i hit a point where i was like i need to fix my scalp and i was doing all these scalp treatments and washing my hair more often whenever i felt irritated scalp treatments wash go as many days as i can scalp treatment wash and then i was able to to just like start extending my hair days again and now i'm back to seven except actually in a healthier way where I can actually do it. So yeah, all the products that I mentioned are gonna be linked down below and I really encourage you to check them out. But I also just challenge you to browse around and just explore and see what else people are liking and using and you don't have to feel pressured to buy absolutely everything. Make sure you do your own research, read reviews. For example, like I have some thick hair. If you have fine hair, we might we might like different things and that is okay um so yeah just find whatever works best for you i do think that the best tip from this video is going to be just the whole preventing hair breakage thing just treat your hair with gentleness and kindness and it will love you back and that is it guys i really hope i'm back on youtube for good this time so leave your comments down below on what you want to see next because i'm so excited to be creating videos for you guys this year bye